This render, which looks exactly the same as the previous one, except that when you look in the alpha channel, you can see that the rocket ship is all cut out. And uh, it's nice to see that we can see the transparency on our little antenna, our little illuminated antenna is working properly as well. So now, this alpha channel is what's going to enable us to cut this rocket out of this image and slap it over the background. So, this image, this render, is ready to go to render a constant value of zero. That means in the alpha channel everything that's black in here will come out as zero and not be visible in the render. We want to go to our white and we want to make sure that the constant value is 255 so it'll always be perfectly white. We also want to go back to the basic tab, make sure the luminosity is on, make sure the value is one. So these now will come out and diffuse as zero so there's no shading on it. So these now will come out as perfectly flat white and they'll make a perfect mat for us. So we can save this object, S. Now when we go back into our uh, layout, we'll update in a second, there we go. Once again back in our, in our uh, scene editor, simply grab the ground plane, go to the object properties, uh, set its alpha channel to constant black. Uh, and for the rocket ship itself again, we'll grab all of its items, all the separate objects, and set their alpha channels to constant black. And I'll do a quick render and we'll take a look at it again. Black. Uh, in the surface editor I'll go to the advanced tab and I'll make the alpha channel for this material constant value of zero. So it'll show up zero in the alpha channel, it'll be black in the render. So all we'll get out of our render is these three surfaces and everything else will be ignored. And that's okay because we have mats for them in other render passes. Now I have a bunch of render passes to import into here plus a, a plate and I could add a read node for each single one and surf for it, but there's a way easier way here. Let me just multi-select these and delete them. There's a far easier way. And here's how it is. Here's the uh, the uh, directory with all of the render passes in it. So I can just multi-select them and drag them right into the node graph and there they are. They automatically come in as read nodes. So we can add a merge node to our scene uh, a number of different ways. We can go over here to the our tools and we can grab a merge node out of here. That's one way to do it. Another way is we can type tab and type start typing merge M E R and this is a great way to find nodes and you can grab merge from there. You can find all of the nodes simply by typing tab and starting to type in. That's another way to get a merge node. Uh, but merge is very commonly used so, so most commonly you'll simply type M and you get a merge node that way. So we'll just play through this and we can see that those elements are properly inter integrated together. What we see that's really missing is that there's no shadow being cast onto the, the table plane here. And now if we look, take a close look, so we have uh, we have the smoke twice. We have it once on top of itself blurred now if I go to the blur and I increase the blur here, you'll see that it's now just kind of around the edges and behind and that we have this one over the top as well that isn't blurred. So we get wispiness around the edges but we get to uh, maintain the kind of the crisp detail inside. And add a shuffle. So tab SH to find a shuffle. And we want to take just the red channel and let's just look through the viewer uh, of the shuffle node. We want to take the red channel and put it into the alpha channel. And then we want to go up here and switch the viewer to alpha and we can either do it through the drop, drop down or we can simply type A. 
So this is what the red channel looks like. So shuffle one, shuffle two here is just this mask. We can add another shuffle node, also connect it to here. And for this shuffle node, we're going to put the green channel into the alpha. And we'll view this one now. And the idea here is by pushing these highlights, what we want to do is create areas of overexposure. Because the real light in the scene, of course, is high range light. It's far brighter than we can display in this low range uh, display medium that we have, this computer monitor. And adding areas of overexposure gives a sense of realistic lighting to CG. One of the, one of the big, uh, biggest problems in CG is always rendering within a low, rain, a low range, in other words 0 to 255 RGB. You want to render above that and that's why we will render in OpenEXR file format because that will allow us to illuminate far beyond the normal low range uh, display and then push up our highlights and make it feel better. In this case I don't think we have that enough illumination in there. So uh, we can, uh, there's lots of different ways we can try turning the gamma up on those. That actually broadens the whole thing. Now if this were a real comp I would obviously spend many many hours uh, very carefully matching up all the colors and hues and shadows and shaded sides. Um, this comp could easily take hours or even days to properly complete. However, uh, that's not the purpose of this training video. The purpose, is, the purpose of this section is to familiarize yourself with Nuke and see how we would put these render layers together and to, to get you started so that you can go forth and start compositing. The completed Nuke flow is part of the content as is all of the renders and the plates so you can actually try this all out yourself and follow along if you wish or you can try it out in completely different ways. Uh, it would be great to see your final comps if you decide you want to make the rocket purple, pink and orange or whatever. Mm -hmm.